Welcome to The Collaborative. I'm your host, Sydney Walker, along with Ryan Ballas. Today, we're joined by Chris Budden. She is a sideline reporter for ESPN, covering football, basketball, and baseball. Prior to joining ESPN, she was a sideline reporter and feature reporter for Fox Sports, covering NFL and college football. Chris has received an Associated Press Award for Best Sport and a Regional Emmy for Best Talent. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. First up, we have Sid, this or that. So first, Waffle House or IHOP? Ooh, Waffle House. <laughs> I grew up in Atlanta for like, until I was 12. So Waffle House was, was and still is the go-to. I live in Roswell, so I had to throw some hometown questions in there. <laughs> <laughs> Centennial Olympic Park or Piedmont Park? Uh, Centennial Olympic Park, because I went to the Olympics in 96. Um, so that, that was kind of some special memories. That's amazing. Peloton or Soul Cycle? Ooh, Peloton. 100%. Uh, Peloton I, have enough, I actually had this argument with my sister the other day because she's a big Soul Cycle person. And uh, I don't have enough rhythm to do Soul Cycle. Like, I just <laughs> like to go as hard and fast as I can. And the last time I went to a Soul Cycle class, I was in New York. And it was like one right off Broadway. And it was like, you could tell a bunch of Broadway dancers. And I was like, could not keep the beat. And I was like, nah, <laughs> nope, <laughs> it's not for me. And lastly, taking it back to your Mizzou days, Harold's Donuts or Sparky's Ice Cream? It was Sparky's Ice Cream. <laughs> so we're going to start this by talking about one of your other passions, tennis. Mm -hmm. When did you discover you had a love for the sport? Yeah, um, so my mom always played, and honestly, I was a diver growing up um, until I was 12, and then I had back surgery, uh, so I have two titanium rods in my back, and that prohibited me from being able to dive anymore, and so at that point, I took up tennis. Uh, I loved it and played uh, all through middle school, high school, state champion for um, my school. I, I could have played at maybe like a smaller D2 school, but I knew that I was um, not going to make <laughs> a long-term career out of that tennis career. Uh, so I went to Mizzou. Uh, but after college, um, when you work in local news, like your hours are 2.30 to midnight. And my mom was like, you should start playing tennis again. You have all this time in the mornings. So I started playing tennis and then took a tennis lesson and met my husband who was my tennis coach at the time. Um, and so uh, he still is, and we've moved all around the country for his jobs and my job. So tennis is um, not just a part of like my growing up, but it's now become a big part of my family. So who are some reporters that you've really admired or that mentored you early on in your career? Um, I think the one that stands out is Pam Oliver. So I was in local news up until I was 30 and then um, transitioned into regional national sports network. And until you've done sideline reporting, like you really, you don't really understand all the stuff that was behind the scenes. Like I've reported live in terms of local news, but I never really understood the ins and outs of like a broadcast and when i was going to fox we were going to a seminar and i shared a car with pam oliver who at this point had done nfl for like 20 years and she could not have been nicer and we stayed in contact and she would let me bounce the most stupid questions off of her like she didn't care um and for a long time like she was my mentor and one thing you had to in my job understand and it takes a while is not all of your ideas make it to air most of the stuff that you study does not make it onto air um, and that she helped me through of, of how do i get the important things on television how to be okay how to sell your ideas how to not dis dis get discouraged because something doesn't end up on air so for a long time she was like that person that if i ever got discouraged i could i could reach out to her Skyline reporting constantly involves writing stories in your head due to the fast paced nature. What are some tricks you use that keep you ready to go at all times? Yeah, I think part of it is that you can't have anything scripted. Now, if it's a 
really human interest story and there's details or names of something that I need to be correct, then I write those down. But the way that the game is and the way that it's so fast, you have to get out before the next snap. So I will have in my head nuggets A, B, C, D, E, F, and I have to know a roadmap that if I saw they're getting up to the line and I got to hurry up, I kind of have to know in my head what details I can drop out to get to the end of the story. And that's kind of the hardest thing to manage. Sometimes you'll have a great play by play and if they'll know if you're not finished with the story and we'll come back to you. But it's, it's being able to weave your way. It's a, it's a dance, it's funny. Like, and it, it, it's a dance that's different for every sport. It's almost the same way of play by play. Like there's a different cadence to it. Um, it it's knowing how to get in and out of a story and tell it concise um, without stepping over everyone and without leaving out crucial details. Um, so you have plenty of family of your own, um, and you often travel a lot during the seasons, maybe not so much this upcoming season, but at least in the past. How do you really balance um, work and having your family time? Yeah, I would say there is no balance. I mean, you just had to be honest with yourself. I was someone that was used to giving 100% to everything, and you just had to realize that you can't. Like, I remember the first time, like my daughter is out there screaming right now. I remember the first time after having my son, who was my first, I was also doing stuff at Tennis Channel. And they called me last minute and said, can you come in? And I was like, I had to see if I can find a babysitter. Like that concept never came, like before I would just drop everything and I would go do it. And I, and then I would beat myself up about it. Like I couldn't find a babysitter. They were gonna think I'm a bad employee. Like then you just start to overthink. As you get older, you realize everyone else is in the same boat as you. Like I, today I was on a Zoom call with my production team. My kids were in the Zoom call 12 different times. Everyone else on the call also has kids. So they also understand. So my motto is be where your feet are. So like when I'm at home and I'm, it's during my time of not working, that work that my kids get 98% of me. There's still 2% that where's my Apple watch that if I get a call, I can do my work. But then when I'm at the game and I'm on the field, that job gets 98% of me. I say that because there's 2% that's always wondering like, did my husband drop off the kid at school? And you just had to be okay that like, there's not enough of you to be perfect at everything. And for, for a lot of people in this job, that's just our personalities. Um, and it's just, you, you just have to be okay with it. There's a lot of aspiring reporters here today. What piece of advice can you offer for building a sustainable career in this industry? Um, confidence in yourself. Uh, in this world of social media, uh, you know, it, it, there's enough people trying to tear you down that like no one can take away your knowledge. Like no matter what someone says, you're studying your prep that you do on a weekly basis. No one can take that away from you. Um, and then the other thing is that it only takes one yes. There could be a thousand no's. I didn't get a job until seven months out of college. I was turned down by lot in Oklahoma and a bunch of other places I can't even remember, but it only takes one person to say yes. I got turned down by Boston. Two days later, I was hired by Fox National to do NFL. So um, don't let the no's take away from your confidence because it really does take just one person to believe in you. Thank you so much for your time yeah, today, Chris. No problem, guys. Chris, thanks for joining us. It was a pleasure.